The sun is bright and blinding, searing through Kaori's windows. I groan, blinking rapidly and check the time on my cell phone. My fingers brush it and it slips from my grasp, plopping loudly onto the floor. Dang it, I hate when I do that. I groan through my teeth. Really? Guess this means I should get up anyway. Reluctantly, I tiptoe out of bed, careful not to wake Kauri. I remember our physical education class that mornings are not her favorite. I'm surprised she didn't wake up from me dropping my phone. Still half asleep, I open the nearest drawer and search for some clothes. Your clothes aren't in any drawers, dude. I pull out a blouse and a skirt. Well, does it match? Can you wear that outfit? Is it okay to wear? Wait a minute. Means it's not. Glancing down, I notice I'd accidentally opened one of Kauri's drawers. Shoot. I better close this before she notices. I carefully fold the clothes and put them back in the drawer when something colorful underneath the blouses catches my eye. Gently peeling back the clothes, I discover that something colorful is wrapping paper. Anxiety curls in my gut. No way. Horror washes over me. We promised each other no gifts. It means everyone at home was right. We don't tell them. What am I going to do? I need to get Kauri something for Christmas. But what? Kauri snuffles in her sleep. I freeze. Don't see me. Don't wake up. Don't wake up. Go back to sleep, sweetheart. She sighs and rolls over, facing the other way. <sighs> I have to get out of here now. Doing my best to move as quickly and silently as possible, I throw on some clothes. Then, I tiptoe out of the room and shut the door softly behind me. When I make it downstairs, I find one of Kauri's sisters in the kitchen. She spots me and perks up. Now, can you tell which one it is by looking at her, dude? Good morning. It's Naomi. I guess I have to find the answer out because the MC can't tell me. Hey, morning. Okay, time to think of a plan. Grabbing my phone, I start searching for a nearby mall. It looks like there is one not too far from here, but I don't have my bike. Maybe I could call a taxi. Ooh, do you need to do some shopping? How did you get there? Whoa! I flinch, almost dropping my phone. Naomi blinks and then giggles. Had she been leaning over my shoulder the whole time? Uh, yeah. I need to grab some last minute things. Well, I'm going to the mall soon if you want to join me. That would be great. Last minute shopping? You're a lifesaver. Uh, that, that would be great. Fantastic. Can I please join you? I let out a deep sigh of relief. Really? That would be awesome. No problem. So, last minute shopping for you too? Did you forget to buy something for someone important? No? Anxiety twists in my stomach all over again. She must have noticed the worried look on my face because she laughs. Oh no, you didn't, did you? Don't, don't sympathize with my stupid ass. We promised each other no gifts. Naomi lifts a perfectly shaped eyebrow. Not just lifts an eyebrow like I normally do. Hers is perfectly shaped, or mine is not. You do realize that's not a real thing, right? Shut up, I know. Damn it, Nikki. Why did she always have to be right? Naomi giggles. Don't worry, I won't say anything to Cowley. No, you won't because you're a good older sibling. I let out a breath of relief. Thanks. She nods. Let's get going. She grabs a set of car keys and throws her purse over her shoulder. I slip my shoes and 
coat on and follow her out of the door. When we arrive at the mall, I realize I've made a terrible mistake. Lots of deals. There's uh, I need I need to hit this coffee shop right away because that's that's just needed. It's morning. It's going to help me survive the mall rush. The place is crawling with people. Christmas decorations light up the shops. There's a huge line of kids cutting through the center of the mall, waiting in line to see someone dressed up as Santa. Apparently, we weren't the only ones who needed to get some last-minute shopping in. Well, I'll see you later then. What, you're just gonna leave me here? What? You don't expect me to shop for your gift right in front of you, do you? I mean, maybe? That is a very good point. She must have noticed the gears turning in my head because she laughs again. Don't worry. When I get back, I'll make sure your gift for Calvary is good. I nod. Thanks. She waves and then turns away. Now what? I glance around at the myriad of stores. Their storefronts light up with stringed lights and bold posters advertise all of their sales, luring in customers. It's all a bit overwhelming, and I feel myself unconsciously dig out my phone. I could use some advice from someone who already has a girlfriend. Don't it freaking be who I think it's going to be. After dialing the number, the phone only rings a few times before I hear his voice on the other end. It better not be. Joseph, what's up? It was this is your advice? This is who you're going to advice for? Okay, humor me. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's turned around. It's been a couple months. It, it could, it could possibly be. He's matured a little bit. Mayu's put him in line, and he's got some good ideas. Show, I need your help. Huh? Whoa, what's wrong? Kauri and I agreed not to get each other presents for Christmas, but when I woke up this morning, I saw that she had already got me something. Show laughs. Oh man, classic no gift, but you actually got a gift. You've been bamboozled. What? That's a classic. Of course. Everyone knows that when a girl says no presents, she actually means yes presents, but in secret. Everyone seems to know except me because you're an idiot. Aha. Uh -huh. So, what should I get her? I need ideas. Good thing you called me. Whenever I struggle with thinking of gift ideas, I always go with this tried and true present. Okay, so it seems like he, he's definitely matured a little bit. He's got some ideas. Let's hear him out. Everyone loves it without fail. Okay. He, he, I'm starting to like it so far. I've got a good... He's got a good pitch going. Continue. Okay. This sounds promising. And what is it? He pauses, taking a deep breath. Really? Nothing's changed. I, I, I really don't know what I expected. I, I was expecting something, but I, I shouldn't have expected anything less from Sho. My temples throb with annoyance. No. Dog. Sho. Dog. Don't you Finish that thought. A lengthy pause. Finally, I hear Sho take a deep breath. Doggo! I, I kind of walked into that one, and I'm sure everyone in the mall around me sit, uh, seeing me go just, oh, I'm friends with an idiot. Yeah, I'm hanging up now. Sho cracks up on the other line. Sorry, Brosif, but it's always about the Dongos. I sigh, defeated. I should have known better than to ask Sho, so why did we call him? Really? Then what did you get Mayu? Oh, I got her a necklace. You can't just tell me it's all about the dongo and then just say you got your girlfriend a necklace. Why didn't you start with that? A uh, dongo? Why did I call you again? 
Okay, well, if dongos aren't what you're looking for, which is insane, I might add, then maybe you should get her jewelry or clothes or something. You're... you're insane. Why did I call him? That's actually not a bad idea. I know. I'm full of those. Occasionally. Not all the time, but occasionally. Thanks, Show. No problem, Brosif. Let me know how it goes. I will. Spoiler, I won't. After we hang up, I feel newly rejuvenated. I think I saw a sign for a jewelry store when I came in here. I look around, and then notice the sign with a giant picture of a diamond on it. I weave my way through the crowd. When I get to the store, I notice there are a few pe other guys in here too, probably for the same reason I'm here. On one wall, there are glittering necklaces, and on the other, I see some nice looking rings behind a, case a glass case. And I just felt my wallet jump out of my pocket and run away and it just crossed traffic and it's hitching a bus and yeah now it's gone i wander around the store taking it all in the sparkles distract me and i feel completely lost among them behind the rings i see a case of watches it couldn't hurt to take a look there right i begin to make my way over but as i cross through the ring section a young saleswoman approaches me. She has long black hair and a gentle smile. She gestures to the glass case. Hello, sir. Are you looking to get engaged? Um, it's a little early for that. Nice try, but I'm taking. Just, just looking, thank you. Uh, it's a little early for that. <laughs> what? Marriage? My heart rate kicks up. Oh, no, no. Not, not yet. I feel the blush heat my cheeks. My hands wave out in panic. I, I mean, I'm too young to get married right now. Not that I wouldn't be opposed to getting married to her someday, but... The girl laughs. It's okay, sir. You don't have to explain yourself. You caught me off guard. I let out a sigh of relief. That gave me more anxiety than it should have. The sales girl smiles and nods. Of course, sir. Perhaps I can interest you in a selection of our promissory rings, then. I blink. A promissory ring? What's that? Her, smiles bro her smile broadens, clearly pleased by my interest. Oh, they're very common among young couples. If marriage is a bit too soon or the timing isn't quite right, a promissory ring is a great alternative. It's a way for couples to make a promise to each other. What that promise may be is very personal and varies among relationships. But at the core of it, a promissory ring is, well, a promise of devotion. That's some pitch you got there. Over here we have. As she begins to lead me away, a man's voice calls out from the back of the store. The store owner motions her to come over. Uh, be right there. Looking slightly annoyed, she politely excuses herself and turns away. That sounded interesting, but it's not exactly what I want to get Cowrie for Christmas. I continue looking around when I spot Naomi coming my way. So, did you buy something yet? You're back already? That was fast. She winks. Don't don't do that. Stop that. I already knew the perfect gift. Putting a hand on her hip, she looks around. This is a good place to start. What were you thinking of getting my little sister? Necklace, earrings, bracelet, a watch, a dress, classic pairing of flowers and chocolate. Uh I wonder, I mean, she is wearing a necklace currently. I don't think she ever really wears earrings. Bracelet wouldn't hurt. There's always a watch. She, I, But she doesn't strike me as the watch type. You don't get a girl clothes. Granted, being with her sister to help pick it out might help, but I've learned from experience, you don't give a girl clothes. And then flowers and chocolate, it's Christmas. Flowers and chocolate's more for like a 
like an anniversary sort of surprise. So we'll go with we'll go with a necklace. Sounds simple enough. Maybe a necklace. Good idea. Let's take a look. Show her a delicate necklace. Show her a show necklace. We're not going a show route. I lead her over to a necklace on display. It's sparkling silver with a little gear charm hanging on the end. Oh, that's that's cute. What do you think? Naomi smiles. Her eyes have gone warm and soft. She would totally love that. I don't know if you're just messing with me or you're being serious. Really? She nods. Yeah, it's elegant, but still plays to her interest. I grin. Perfect. The saleswoman wraps the present up for me after it's paid for. Have a nice day. Thanks. Ready to go? Yeah, let's head back. Now that my shopping's done, we make our way back into the parking lot. The drive home is pretty smooth. Naomi tells me a bit more about what she does for a living on the way back. It's cool to learn more about her. Hi, sweetheart, I'm back. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, I was gone. By the time we're back, Kauri is standing in the living room. Oh, there you are. She cocks her head and crosses her arms. Where did you go? Her eyes snap to the shopping bag in my hand. My stomach drops. I can't tell her I had to go out and buy her something. I have to get, get out of this somehow. Um, well... Kauri flinches in surprise. Huh? Naomi spreads her arms wide and throws them around her sister, squeezing her tightly. My little sister, I've missed you so much! What? That's my reaction. Her face turns a slight shade of pink. Get off me! She struggles, but Naomi just latches on even tighter and giggles. What was that nickname? I thought we agreed never to use that name again. No, you agreed, it sounds like. Oh, man. The embarrassing nicknames have started to appear. I hold back from gritting. Good choice. Kauri struggles and fights even harder, but Naomi whirls her around so Kauri's back is facing me. She winks, motioning for me to go hide the gift. Oh, that's right. I make a quick dash for Kauri's bedroom and hide her present in my suitcase. Then I run back out to the living room. When I return, Naomi is still holding Kauri as tight as a vase, or a vice, I should say. Let go of me! Naomi smiles playfully, rubbing her cheek against Kauri like a snuggly kitten. Nope, I'll never, ever, ever. She glances up at me from over the top of Kauri's head. and abruptly releases her. Kauri yelps and trips. She catches herself at the last minute, whirling to face the twin. What the heck was that? Naomi laughs and shrugs. I was just so overwhelmed with love and affection. Kauri huffs, brushing herself off. Naomi pouts. How could you be so cold to your loving older sister? That's not it at all! Naomi pretends to sniffle. Luckily, Kauri's mom floats into the room, smiling brightly. Lunch is ready. Food? Naomi instantly brightens up. Ooh, I'm starving. Kauri glares at her suspiciously. Just don't worry your pretty little head about it. You're, she's just being weird. Together, we head into the kitchen. Ayame and Kauri's father joins us, join us for a delicious meal. Ayame and Naomi continue to tease Kauri. They seem to enjoy sparking a rise out of her. Her mother is more focused on getting to know me, taking, talking a million miles a minute. Kauri's father is more quiet, but he smiles and chimes in once in a while. I mean, he's probably just sitting there going, do I kill him now? 
or do I kill him later? I'm still deciding. After lunch, her father disappears into the garage. A few minutes later, he comes back hauling a giant crate. Kauri's mom beams. Oh, thank you for getting that, dear. He grins back, a little pink in the face. What's that for? These are the rest of the decorations. We're about to set them up. Yes, it just wouldn't be Christmas without the decorations. Kauri nods and stands up. Start? Oh no, not you two. She giggles and waves her hands. You two can go and spend some time together. The twins nod. Yeah, we can handle this. Oh, we don't mind helping. Sure. But the rest of the family protests. No! 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 Um, Mr. Atami, I appreciate the help, but my, uh, my Uncle Kaito has once told me a, uh, a very valuable piece of advice and information, and I feel you might know this, but I need to pass it along to you. I've learned not to argue with women, and all of the women in your house, except for your youngest daughter, has just said no. Her father looks at the rest of his family in surprise, then chuckles. Before we can even begin to insist, Kauri's mom and sisters have started shoving us out of the kitchen. Go be cute. I mean, she does all of that for us. I'm, I'm just kind of here. What? Hey! The twins grab our coats and hats as they usher us out. Just have a sweet and romantic time. Why do you guys have to act so weird all the time? Because they're your family. That's what they're supposed to do. Before we can stop them, they've successfully handed us our coats and shoved us out the front door. Rude. I grab Kauri's arm to keep her from slipping over a patch of ice on the stoop. Wait a minute! But her mother grins. Have a lovely time, you two. She winks, then slams the door. Hey! Kauri jiggles the handle, but it doesn't budge. They locked us out! She shivers, huddling closer to me, then lets out a loud sigh. Well... Now what do we do? I look at the piles of snow around us, and I have an idea. We should make a snowman. Kauri looks thoughtfully at the snow, then nods. I haven't done that since I was a kid. It could be fun. Same. How about we practice making one on our own first? Sounds like a plan to me. We kneel in the snow next to each other and get started. Hmm. What kind of snowman should I make? Make a normal snowman, lewd snowman, or snow woman. A creative and abstract masterpiece. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my old try of just try to make a, a normal snowman, even though I can't. You can't go wrong with a good old fashioned snowman. I roll up a few snowballs of differing sizes and set them on top of each other. Ah, yes. The most perfect average Joe I have ever seen. After a few minutes, Kauri stands up. All done. She smiles and looks over to me. Hey, it looks good. Great job. I grin. Thanks. Okay, let's see yours. She steps to the side, revealing her snowman. It looks pretty standard, but a little more lopsided than average with weird, uneven lumps. What do you think? What is it? You should stick to piloting. Looks great. You know what? I That would be how I make my snowman, so I can't judge anything, so it looks great. Her snowman looks a little off somehow, but I know whatever my hunch is, it wasn't Kauri's intention. I smile brighter. Looks awesome. She grins back. Thanks. We should make one together. With both our talents combined, it'd look awesome. Oh, good idea. I, I'm full of those. 
We spent we spent time rolling up giant snowballs and placing them on top of each other. Kauri and I can't agree on the type of snowman we should make, so we decide to make every variation. The sun begins to dip low in the sky as we play in the snow. I roll a little snowball and sneakily chuck it at her. It hits her coat with a splat. Kauri retaliates by throwing a huge one at me. I duck, just barely managing to avoid it. Typical Kauri response. Her laughter rings in the air as we have a snowball battle. After a short break, we get back on track and finish up our collaborated snowman. It's almost as tall as us. We find some sticks to use for arms and use some rocks for eyes and smile. To finish it off, Kauri places her hat on its head and I wrap my scarf around its neck. Kauri grins and plants her hands on her hips. It's perfect. I share her grin. Yeah, it is. Suddenly, we hear the click of the front door. Kauri's mom stands in the doorway, beaming at us. Hey, you two. Dinner is ready. So we can come back inside now? She spots our snowman, and her eyes light up. Oh, it's magnificent. You two make such a great team. A grin spreads across my face. I cross my arms, blooming with pride. Thank you. She clasps her hands together, her eyes glittering. You two are already creating such beautiful things together. She's implying something. Her eyes sparkle with wonder. If your snowman is as handsome, just imagine. My face is with Cowrie's. Kauri's face flushes. Mom! That, this is awkward now. Oh. That seems to snap her out of her daydream. Her mother lets out a slight laugh. Oh, don't mind me. Oh, why don't you two come in from the cold? Please. We go inside, stomping the snow off of our boots. We take off our jackets, instantly warmed by the nice and cozy house. A delicious aroma wafts from the kitchen. I follow Kauri to the dinner table, where her family is already seated in front of a modest spread of food. There's a salad, miso soup, rice, and fish. A familiar, simple, Japanese meal. It really does feel comfortable here, like home. We sit down at the table and begin eating. The twins and their mother are talking about fashion, and Kauri chimes in every now and then with her thoughts. Her, their father listens quietly, but I can tell it's not a topic he's very interested in. I hadn't realized how hungry I was, but I ate everything on the plate. I guess making those snowmen was more work than I thought. Kauri's dad chuckles. Looks like you worked up quite an appetite out there. Please, feel free to help yourself if you'd like more. Thanks. I take him up on his offer and help myself to more food. We were making snowmen. He grins. And how did Kyrie's look? I hesitate, and he laughs. That sounds about right. Kyrie's talented in many ways, but she always struggled in art. Really? He nods. When she was in preschool, she drew me a picture of an elephant, and I thought she made a hand turkey. She was really upset when I couldn't guess what it was. Of course, I'm sure she's improved a lot since then. I'm reminded of her snowman and grin to myself. That might be debatable, though I'm not much better. What else did she make you? Her father shares more stories about Kauri's childhood. He seems really excited to be able to talk about his daughter. I can tell that he cares for her a lot. Once we finish up dinner, we take a moment to relax and digest. Kauri glances at her sister, pouring herself a glass of something. What's that? Naomi grins, sipping the drink. My company gifted this to me. You should try it. It's good. Kauri glances at the label of the bottle, but it's all written in a foreign language. It looks like Danish or Dutch. Seriously, it's good. Try it. 
Ayami drinks from her own glass and nods. Well, okay. She pours a glass and downs the liquid in one gulp. That's downing it, not trying a sip. Naomi's eyes glitter mischievously. Ayame smiles, but looks a little worried. Be careful, Kauri. Don't overdo it. Kauri lets out a breath and seems surprised. It's not that bad. She suddenly bounces with a high-pitched little hiccup. Everyone bursts out laughing. Are you sure you can handle it? Kauri nods confidently, picking up her glass again. Whatever it is, it must be strong. I take a whiff of the bottle and feel the sting in my nose. Definitely strong. As Kauri starts drinking again, her mother pours herself a glass. Ayame turns to me. What about you? Do you want to try it? Count me in. I should not get drunk on my first day with the family. I'm going to go with option two here. As, as tempting as it is to give it a go, and in real life, I probably would give it a go. But I know where, where the team was going that way. I'd get really hammered in this, but I want to make a good impression on the parents. It's always better if offered to decline, even if everyone else around you is, again, first impressions are key, especially when meeting the parents. I'm good, but thanks anyway. Ayame nods. Kauri squints at me. Your face is so blonde. We're back on this again, huh? I raise an eyebrow. What? She giggles. You're so blonde. I'm getting a serious case of deja vu. Suddenly, she pulls me into a hug. Oh my god! My blonde man has returned! I hadn't gone anywhere. I feel soft fingers running through my hair. Kauri sighs happily. It's still so soft and fluffy! Okay, maybe it's time. She squeals, nuzzling her cheek against mine before rubbing her face in my hair like a cat. Mm, so soft. I feel like I should protest, but I kind of like this. I decide to let the girl enjoy the soft and fluffies. Kauri's mom glances over and unsuccessfully tries to keep her excitement at bay. Let's let these two lovebirds spend some time together. The girls nod in agreement, and her father glances at us. Amusement in his eyes. Yeah, he knows she's drunk, and I'm sober, and just kind of sitting here going, Well, this is, this is interesting. The twins pull their parents out of their chairs and steer them towards the living room. Kauri takes another drink, then looks at me. What? She shakes her head. Nothing. But she continues to look at me. Do I have something on my face? She giggles and shakes her head again. She looks at me again, then smiles, as if she's reached a decision about something. She nods, determined, and drinks again. I'm not sure what's going on. She sits back in her chair, fanning herself. Is it getting hot in here? Now that you mention it just a little bit, she starts tugging on her, at her collar. All of this needs to come off. Yeah, it's definitely getting warmer in here. Did what? Did I hear that right? Christmas has come a day early. <laughs> Cowrie, you're drunk. Did. Uh, you know what? I, I gotta be I gotta be the good boyfriend here. I mean, sure, we've been dating a while. I'm sure it's not an un impossible thing to have happened, but y you're drunk. This is not you. But you know what? Did did I hear you just say that right? I wanna I wanna I want we we need to recap. Did you just say what I think you said? I feel my cheeks flame. 
Kauri, what are you saying? She reaches for her shirt, but I grab her hands. Wait a minute. Why? A fox's smirk slides across her face. Is this getting you all hot and bothered? What, when, when did I go from talking to Kauri to talking to Kara from Crystalline? When, when did this happen? I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this. W what? Hot, bothered, and ready for action? Nope, I'm gonna pull the embarrassed card. My face burns. No, I, I mean, not that you aren't, uh, I, I'm just... She giggles as I struggle to find the words. Suddenly, I'm the one feeling really warm. Kauri wobbles up from her chair and sits next to me. She rests her head on my shoulder and binds her arms around my neck. Oh, hello there. Hi. She giggles and looks up at me. My breath continues to ca ca my breath catches in my throat as I gaze at her lips. So soft and sweet, teasing me. I yearn for a taste. Her face inches closer to me until she's a breath away. As I'm about to close the gap, she pulls back. What? I blink, stunned, confused, and left hanging. Kauri giggles again, watching my expression told me to do that. When did you start taking advice from that girl? And no wonder. This teasing seemed very out of character for Kauri. Two Valerie's is one too many. My jeans can't handle all this teasing. Just be yourself. I don't want Valerie. I want you. Just be yourself. You don't need to ask Valerie for advice. I like you just the way you are. She squeezes me in a hug before pulling away. Kauri's smile starts to fall as she lets out a loud yawn. Getting sleepy. She frowns. No, I am wide awake. I raise an eyebrow. Really? You're awake? Yes. Wide awake. Then, do you care to explain why your head is on my shoulder? Why am I arguing about cuddles? Kauri, who had been leaning on me, suddenly jerks back. She blinks rapidly before pinning her stare on me, squinting. Why are there, like, two of you? I smile and stand up, holding my arm around her waist. Let's get to bed. She lets out another loud yawn. As we head back to her room, we hear the others turn the TV off. They must be getting ready to go to bed soon, too. As soon as Kauri hits the mattress, she rolls over and cuddles a pillow. I plop down beside her, rubbing my eyes. With a warm, with a full and warm belly, I have no trouble falling into a deep sleep. That was a night. Drug Cowrie makes another return. Fantastic. I'm awake bright and early in the morning. It's Christmas, and we'll celebrate Christmas with her family next time. I'm going to end the episode here. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button down below or leaving a comment. It really does help me out. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more, make sure to unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well and ringing that little bell for when new videos go live. Feel free to follow me on social media. The links to those will be in the description down below. And I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.